This image was taken April the 15th, 2013. And it shows an amazing bulge in Saturn's A ring. Right at the bottom of the picture is a little aberration in the ring. What's amazing about this is the author of a report about this phenomenon. He's, he said it seems like this is ice that has migrated to the end of the, uh, and to a made of bulge migrating together. And he says, we've not seen anything like this before. We may be looking at the act of birth where the object is just leaving the rings and heading off to be a moon in its own right. So that's Carl Murray. He's saying, it looks like we're, we're witnessing the formation of a new moon. Saturn has uh, 62 moons. Jupiter has 67. So you have the planet symbolic of Satan trying to be like the Messiah. And he hasn't stopped trying. So now he's trying to get the 63rd moon. This was taken in April of 2013. It was not released until the report a year later in April the 14th, 2014. What's amazing about that date is that was Passover. And not only that, that was the eve of the first blood moon that we've experienced recently. So here we have... What do you? What is it symbolic of when you have Satan giving birth to a new moon? Isn't that like the Antichrist being formed? And the fact that it was on Passover when the report was released, that is when the Antichrist is going to try to come and stop the sacrifice in the middle of the Passover week. Very, very interesting phenomenon here. And we'll see when this moon separates. I bet you you'll see a simultaneous appearance of the man of sin. Let's follow Saturn in the year of 2015 and we'll see some amazing things. We know what Saturn represents, Satan, and where, where is he at in 2015? This is the uh, very end of the Scorpion constellation. We know that represents the power of the enemy, the kingdom of darkness. Well, watch Saturn as he goes in on February the 1st and March. Then he turns around and he leaves. And he's outside of the scorpion. And the retrograde motion is taking Saturn back into Libra. It's, it's like its kingdom is hanging in the balance scales of Libra. But then... Something happens, he turns around, and in November, he goes back into the scorpion to stay. What does that represent? I think we have a perfect picture of the rapture in the stars, and we'll look at that in a second. Let's look at what the events that happen as Saturn goes into the scorpion on February the 1st. Here's a zoomed out picture. He just entered it. What does he do three weeks later? Peace treaty with Iran. Here is a newspaper article from Israel. Deal with Iran closer than ever. French newspaper reports. The same day that they're reporting the deal is closer than ever, if you look to the right, Mars and Venus are closer than ever. They made their closest approach look at this amazingly they made their closest approach the same day that Kerry was meeting negotiating with Iran uh, that Mars is war Venus is peace side by side in Pisces representing the nations you've got the, the five the plus one they call it uh, all of the nations, Russia, China, Britain, Germany, France, United States, they're all, the European Union, they're all negotiating with Iran. So, very symbolic here. The next thing that happens, we have a total solar eclipse at the beginning of the new year, the biblical new year, March 20th. What happens then? 
Now Saturn is in the scorpion. The first thing he tries to do is do a peace treaty. The second thing is they have uncovered that there was a planned nuclear first strike on Russia during the same week that we have the solar eclipse. That sounds incredible, but here's what an article said. The FSB, that's the, uh, the, basically the KGB, the modern KGB, and Kapersky lab experts redirected network traffic through Russian telecom, which was in Kiev, which then enabled them to obtain the launching codes and coordinates of all the UK's nuclear weapons, showing their plan to launch a first strike against the Federation during the week of March 15th. Recall the solar eclipse was on the 20th. As amazing as that sounds, and whether it, it seems too incredible or not, the article below shows that the traffic was redirected right here redirected traffic to the UK atomic weapons establishment it's supposed to go from Houston straight to London where did it go it went to Kiev Ukraine Russian telecom and then it went back it looks like this is a true article and and they did retain the launch codes and during this time Putin disappeared for 10 days Mysteriously, nobody heard from him. I think he was expecting a nuclear attack. Where was the solar eclipse during this time? Right off of the coast of the United Kingdom. The one that was going to attack Russia and Norway. There's a lot of military action going on there. That's where the, that GE is the greatest eclipse. That's where the eclipse reached its great, greatest magnitude there. And right where the strife was. Amazing, the signs in the heavens are mirroring the events on earth. The next thing that happened, we have the third consecutive blood moon on matzah, unleavened bread. What did that represent? Well, the third blood moon just happened to coincide with the establishment or the attempted establishment of a rival banking system to the United States Federal Reserve International Monetary Fund World Bank system dominated by the US dollar. It's called the Asian Infrastructure Investment Bank and it was formed right around this time. And here's a couple of articles that just showed the significance. The United States has lost its role. This is the first challenge to the United States as having the, the be leading the finances of the world since the Second World War. And so here we see a map to the right. Basically, you know, the yellow countries are the ones that are with the United States. The red and the blue are the ones that have joined the Asian Infrastructure Investment Bank, including many of the United States allies. Basically, the whole world is abandoning the dollar and going with this Asian Infrastructure Investment Bank. That happened while Saturn was in the Scorpion. So he tried to do a peace treaty, he tried to do a nuclear war, and then he tried to set up a financial system. None of those worked. He left the Scorpion on April 24th. He's out. What happens while Saturn is out? Solar eclipse on the eve of Yom Teruah is the next big event. Something's going to happen. September 28th is the fourth blood moon on Sukkot, Tabernacles. On October the 1st, the United States is going to hand the control of the Internet to the United Nations. Here's an article that shows it will relinquish all remaining control on October 2015 over the root of the Internet. And so that looks like it's giving uh, formation to a worldwide control of the information system. All the internet, all the information will be controlled by one power. Very, very scary. Looks like the New World Order is being formed right before our eyes. And then what happens on October 24th, the United Nations celebrates its 70th year. 70th year. Looks like a generation is just ending. The final generation. On October 28th, only four days later, 
after the 70th anniversary, what's the first thing? Saturn goes back in the Scorpion. This time, he goes back to stay. Looks like his new world order is set up for him. What is the next thing he do, does? Six days later, a peace treaty with Israel? Take a look at what's going to happen in the stars and see if you don't see a peace treaty with Israel. This is Mars and Venus. This is just three images showing three days from November the, the 3rd, the 4th, the 2nd, 3rd, and 4th going into Virgo on, in 2015. Look how simultaneously Venus and Mars go side by side, uh, war and peace, go into Virgo, representing Israel, exactly the first star, that's, that's the first star in Virgo, New Virginius, and they're exactly even with that star side by side as they both enter into the constellation Virgo at the exact same time. It looks like, how else would you describe a peace, show a peace treaty in the stars? A perfect example. And you see Jupiter to the right, is right in the foot of Leo the lion. The lion represents the Jewish people. Jupiter is the Messiah. This peace treaty is going ahead of the Messiah. He's not there yet. But it's going to be made to look like it was a treaty from the Messiah. Because it will be the false Messiah. So here we have the stars showing exactly what looks like a peace treaty in Israel. As soon as Saturn enters the scorpion. Interesting. Then we have a Uni United Nations binding worldwide carbon tax treaty scheduled by December 11th. And here's an article from United Nations. And it says, a binding treaty expected to be adopted in Paris at the end of this year. So here you have a global tax, a worldwide mandatory tax. This has never happened before. They haven't ever instituted this. You've got a global control of the internet. Everything is in order. So let's look at what I think is the rapture in the stars as we look at a scripture before we go back to what Saturn's doing. Paul says, Now brethren, Concerning the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ and our gathering of, together to Him, we ask you not to be soon shaken in mind or troubled, either by spirit or by word or by letter, as if from us, as though the day of Christ had come. With this first part, it, we don't know if he's talking about one event or two events. You can't tell. Is he talking about the coming of our Lord at the same time as the gathering together, or is he talking about two different events? Uh, events. The coming of the Lord is one event and the gathering is another. He said that's his subject. That's what he's writing about. But we don't know if, if it's at this point, we don't know if he's talking one or two things. But we know that they thought the day had already come. They did not understand what had happened and they were shaken by some letter that they had received. He says, let no one deceive you by any means for that day will not come unless the falling away comes first and the man of sin is revealed, the son of perdition. Okay, he's saying this has to happen first, before that day can come. And then he says something incredible, and now you know what is restraining, that he may be revealed in his own time, for the mystery of lawlessness is already at work, only he who now restrains will do so until he is taken out of the way, and then the lawless one will be revealed. What is Paul saying? And now you know. They didn't know. That's why he's writing the letter. They were confused. And he says, and now you know. How do they know? The reason they know, Paul just told them. He told them in the first sentence what was restraining. He says, concerning the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ and our gathering together. That has to be what he's talking about. The restraining force is the the gathering together, the righteous have left. That's the restraining force. It has to be talking about, he's talking about two different subjects. It certainly isn't the coming of the Lord that's restraining. 
That doesn't make any sense. The Lord comes, and when the Lord comes, that allows the Antichrist to be revealed? I don't think so. It has to be our gathering together to him that restrains. And so it shows he's talking about two different events, and the gathering of the righteous is what's a restraining force. So now, with that bit of information, when does the gathering happen? We know it happens on Yom Teruah. When does Yom Teruah happen? When Saturn is outside of the scorpion. Remember, he tries to go in. He can't. He goes out. Let's look at this in the stars, and you'll see it. Here's the same graphic, but we're going to put the events that happen, and you'll, you'll see. Okay, he's outside of the scorpion, starting the year 2015. And now we're going to watch him enter the scorpion on February the 1st. First thing he does, first rattled out of the box, tries to get a peace treaty. It doesn't work out. Second rattle out of the box, he tries to get nuclear war with Russia. That's narrowly averted. The third rattled out of the box is he tries to get a worldwide banking system. That doesn't work. So he leaves. And he's out for six months. So we'll watch him go out. Seems like nothing's happening for a while. But look what happens as soon as he turns around and starts to go back in. There it is. Yom Teruah. The righteous ones are gathered. The restraining force is removed. He can now go back in. Then we have the fourth blood moon. The Pope promotes a new world order at the UN. The United Nations takes over the internet. Then we have the 70th anniversary and an Israeli peace treaty as soon as he enters the scorpion. And then finally in December, the global carbon tax by the United Nations. His kingdom is all set up.